It's time for Paradox Plays the Classics this week with Jake and Blondie. Hello. Yeah, welcome. Completely well, my fault. Yeah, but completely. that's fine. I mean, you came in here, said I, I was in a very important meeting, and I'm sitting here like, what could be more important than PDX Plays the Classics? To be honest, there is very little in my life that's more important than Dungeon Keeper. Exactly. But the thing is that the folks at home, like, they often get this insight into us, but they, they see us here enjoying yeah. ourselves, playing games, doing dev clashes and all that. Sometimes I think it's kind of hard to convince them that we do actually do some work <laughs> here. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, Welcome to PDX Plays the Classics, everyone, which is a show where we take a Paradox developer and play an old game from their uh, from their childhood sometimes. Um, so, so I'm not going to be actually building a dungeon. No, sleep. unfortunately. Uh, well, I mean, in game, you do yeah. build a gun dungeon game. This is Dungeon Keeper from. As if they needed to something. know. This is just one of the greatest games ever conceived. When is Dungeon Keeper? Ninety-seven. Bull Bullfrog at their finest, and uh, Peter Molyneux at his best. Prom <laughs> promised so much, Oof. and. You know, that's about his best, but that the unbelievable actually delivered. I mean, it's 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 pretty funny that you come in here and say, like, this is Peter Molyneux's best, when we had Chris playing uh, Populous 2, and he was like, this is the best game Peter Molyneux has ever made. Well, I mean, <laughs> we're, we're from different walks of life, right? Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, so Dungeon Keeper, why don't we just jump right into it and uh, start foaming at our mouths about um, how great it is. Well, at least I will be. Uh, I just want to say that... I played Dungeon Keeper since I was a wee child, and that might not seem like it was very long ago, but... Dino is in chat and uh, trolling, it's like, didn't Dungeon Keeper come out before you and I were born? Ooh, ooh. No. I, I have never played this one, actually. Uh, so, uh, Dungeon, Dungeon Keeper 1997, I remember yep. going to a... Uh, uh, where was I? I would believe I was in Dundee at a, at a computer game shop there, and I saw the cover with the uh, the Horned Reaper on the front. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was just like, oh, I don't know what this is, but I gotta have it. <laughs> uh, we uh, we were incredibly poor. We didn't have a great computer, but no. uh, it would just barely run this game uh, <laughs> with no sound whatsoever. Oh. Uh, but hey, we had a hell of a time. There was a way to zoom out on this. I'm gonna pretend I know how. What was it? Oh, oh, uh, oh. I, uh, ah, there we there go. We go. There we go. And then we got the... See, why, why do we have this <laughs> awful setup for our keyboard? This is not the keyboard you would have in 1997. Also not in England. No, heavens no. It, these, it's an American these... keyboard with a Swedish layout. On, it, in the, it drives me nuts. Okay, so Dungeon Keeper, you play as the nameless, faceless overlord of uh, what goes on in the subterranean worlds, and you control uh, all your... Well, you have indirect control over all your creatures here. You have to mine out your lair, and you will uh, fill it accordingly. So, for example, I have built up a treasure chamber here. And my little imps, who I can slap around, and this was the, the, the greatest freaking yeah, yeah. feature they put in this game. Like, you can just slap your minions so that they work <laughs> faster and harder. And it will hurt them, and they will get angry with you. I mean... They can die. And I, I was a Nintendo child at the yeah, time, yeah. you know? It was just Nintendo, Nintendo for me before this game came along and uh, changed my life. Our computer, like I said, it was pretty garbage. It couldn't <laughs> really run that much. Uh, and. It, uh, at the time, I played the likes of, uh, hmm, I think I played Caesar a little after this, maybe before, yeah. hard to remember, but, uh, you know, I, I was, uh, I was not Starcrafting away or no, whatever, no, whatever no. people do these days. Um, so, yeah, this was mind-blowing. There, yeah, there's no other way to put it. Uh, it really awoke inside me this desire to craft your world within the world that the game yeah. gives you, because there's so many options you have with mining it all out. I mean, it certainly shows its age right now. It, the, the map really <laughs> isn't that big, all things considered. No. But just the power you have over it and the immersiveness. You are the bad guy. You know, that yeah. that was... It's not just that you're the bad guy, but you have to worry about things that you would have to worry about there. You know, the, the infrastructure that you have, managing your, uh, your evil minions. It was just... So cool. It's so it, I, I think it's a really interesting like hybrid of a strategy game and a, uh, a like a theme hospital kind of building uh, game or like a city builder where like it's not just a strategy game. It uh, is there, there is like, so so much uh, so much was. more to it. Yeah. Uh, so 
I talked about my history with this game, but uh, what about you? You said you were a DK2 man. Yeah, I uh, I, th I think I got uh, DK2, Dungeon Keeper 2, from uh, my aunt's husband or something like that in 2000. So about a year after it actually came out. Mm -hmm. um, and then, like, in my teens, I was like, hmm, maybe I should play the original Dungeon Keeper. And of course, at this point, I was like 14, and graphics meant everything to Oh, me. yeah, I mean... So, you can, I couldn't can, play this. If we can zoom right in, it's like, mm -mm, that Look at those pixels. goodness. All four of those pixels. It'll work faster, you dumbass. There we go. <laughs> oh, yeah. Um, yeah, see, it went the other way for me, because I later on played Dungeon Keeper 2, but I just felt something was lacking there it it did do uh, it did go full on for the 3d whereas here we have this wonderful mix of sprites but yeah. uh, 3d landscape that, that i adore but uh, <laughs> you know i can see how it uh, your uh, your experience may vary yeah i mean it, it all depends on kind of where you come from of course at that time i was uh, like a final fantasy player mostly I, I was Best a final fantasy uh probably nine 10. Okay, we're One. good, we're good. Might have had to like cover the camera for a bit and just had a bit of fisticuffs. No, I love uh, 9 and 10. Yeah. Uh, no, of course, the best one is Final Fantasy 8. There we go. <laughs> uh, what is wrong with you? See, the reason we shove Anders in the booth there when I'm down here is because he's got no taste. Yeah, of Fan course. Final Fantasy 8. Fantastic. Is it, is it too deep for you? <laughs> No, in all reality, Final Fantasy is kind of crap. It uh, really fell apart, didn't it? Yeah. There we go. Oh, man. This... I was really whiny. <laughs> yeah. Whatever. To be fair, that is a Final Fantasy mainstay. Well, we got fair some uh, input from the chat then. I, I want to hear their uh, their favorite. Um, Lay that one to bed. Let's see. Okay, so it have been kind of ignoring what the game is telling you. We're just in Tutorial City right yeah, now. Yeah. It's been telling me to uh, fortify my walls. Just from very early on, the game teaches you everything you need to know very, uh, very gradually. And it does, yeah. a, it does a wonderful job of it, you know. There are so many rooms to build here. And uh, really, a core part of this game is how are you going to lay out your dungeon. There's creating the dungeon and looking after the minions that arrive here. And uh, you're slowly going to unlock different rooms to play. I played the demo of this game so many times as well and uh, when I actually played the full game again no yeah. sound uh, just being able to, to use everything I don't even think the demo went up to libraries oh, so we, we've got our we've got our minions here we've got some beetles we've got some flies they're just chilling there's nothing for them to do but at least we can feed them with the chickens I don't tell me tell me it works yes you can possess the chickens <laughs> yeah it's fantastic uh, you, you could do this in the second one as well, but I think it was an unlockable uh, spell, mm -hmm. not something you had from the beginning. Yeah, whereas in this one, from the very start, you can possess, and uh, really a lot of the uh, a lot of the strategies in this game, if you want to get real hardcore into it, is through possession yeah. and uh, and rushing. But I didn't care about all that when I was playing. I just wanted to have the time of my life. So we're getting invaded here, and whilst we could just wait for them to come along, I don't have the time for that. Let's just go and uh, go and meet them. I can, well, maybe the maybe you can hear at home, but they are that's digging it. their own way through. The the chat as a collective uh, is uh, agreeing with me that Dungeon Keeper Two was a little bit better. I'm sorry to tell you that you're wrong, but I mean, too much to <laughs> So, uh, we've now been invaded and uh, we're being attacked. Of course, I've made it so that they come right yeah. into my lair. So, they're going to be greeted with a lot of very unhappy beetles and flies who are currently mashing this dude's face in. I think I will join in. Oh my god, the fish eye on this. Oh yeah, thing. fish eye for beetles. <laughs> and then, having flies, they'll go out and explore. Here's the thing, like, uh, creatures have their own modus operandi. They'll yeah. do their own thing. And flies, they just want to buzz about and explore. Like, they, they don't care about working your workshops that much or studying. They just want to fly about and, you know, like, eat crap like flies yeah. do. I think it's... Uh, it, I assume... I, I don't actually know this game as well as the second one, but... This was, uh, Dungeon Keeper 2 was the first game for me where you played the bad guy. Mm -hmm. You were, you were evil. 
There was yeah, no like, great, oh, maybe it? maybe you're good, maybe you're bad. It's all in the eye of the beholder. No, no, you are evil. I mean, and, and you I, are fighting the heroes. I like that you could be as evil as you want. So yeah. I mean, to win, you generally have to destroy the other person's uh, dungeon heart here. Yeah, that's fine. But it's up to you if you want to enslave all of the enemies, yeah. shove them in your prison, starve them until they become your own skeletons, or even torture them. <laughs> I mean, I wonder if you'd even get away with half of this stuff in games today. Like you'd. St- uh, shove these humanoid creatures into your torture chamber yeah. and you'd start like ripping the wings off of the fairies or whipping them or using the magician's own staff to transform himself. I was just like, this appeals to me in ways yeah, yeah. that I should probably talk to people about. <laughs> and uh, bear in mind, I must have been, what, uh, eight years old at the time? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, man, good times. Good <laughs> bloody times. There we go, so flies are a bit rubbish. I'm even going to slap him to death because he's so bad. We need the Beatles here to go and show this tunneler who's boss. Dungeon Keeper was good training work, training for working in the games industry. Absolutely. <laughs> My soul was sold long ago, so the transition was uh, pretty easy. Yeah. There we go. So that, that's our first proper victory. We killed the two tunnelers, and the Lord of the Land will arrive very soon. And this game really is even better with sound. Yeah. <laughs> things I was missing out I, I, I think it's funny. You played this without sound. And uh, Don, Podcat, he he was here playing uh, XCOM 2. Oh, yes. And he was playing that without color. <laughs> what? <laughs> he was playing it on a monochrome screen. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, the, the screen was a bit crap, but at least we had one with color. But, yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's, it's kind of sad because that means I wasn't able to appreciate at the time the great soundscape of this yeah. game. I mean, things just sound so industrial here. Yeah. To really make you feel like you uh, you are running the show here and you've got to make things work for your creatures. It's yeah. Not, it's not just take bad guys, kill good guys. It's like, okay, I need to feed my guys. I need to give them a place to stay. I have to train them. But not like actual take them and train them. I need to build the infrastructure with which they can train and get paid and all of that. This what? game is also what gave me my unhealthy obsession with money because you you have such a dark and grim underworld. Yeah. And then you know within all that, if I can actually use our horrible keypad here, you know this glittering, gold. lovely gold, and you can even just pick it up and have it in your yeah, hands. Yeah. And I remember being a kid with my coppers going like, ah, yes, yes, <laughs> just like in my video games. Oh man, uh, those were the freaking oh, days. Arius coming in here saying my first game wasn't even black and white, it was black and green. Ooh, ooh, Proper old school. Man, were you playing on uh, an oscilloscope? Because uh, <laughs> that's what I'm hearing. <laughs> and it means that uh, at the end you, you get told about how tortured and yeah. raised the place is and I never got to hear that. Probably for the better. Maybe, actually. probably since you were eight. Yeah, yeah, something about like your demon spawn chewing on their faces. Yeah. It's just, oh man. Oh, I don't like this. I do not like this at all. Why am I only uh, eighth place here? And then the map. It starts out so lush and green and yeah. blue, and oh my, this is this is not optimized well. well. No, no, it's optimized too well. And then slowly things are going to get more burned and sizzled and destroyed, and you're like, I have made this ruination. Yeah. I don't remember what the map was like in DK2, but I do believe that it was worse than this. Was it, that's pretty cool. Was it Molyneux on DK2? Um, He'd gone to, what, uh, Lionhead by then? Maybe. Um, yeah, it does look like uh, DK2 was not... Uh, Molyneux. Uh-huh. Because I think he got a was... Got a dream big, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he was working on black and white then, probably. Uh, which is, uh, if I were to do, uh... So when it is blonde, he plays the classics. Yeah, it's then it would be... probably be black and white. I just realized. I've been thinking, like, oh, maybe I should do, like, an RPG, because I, I was an RPG player until... I started here, basically. Uh, <laughs> no, but... Till we came and showed you the light. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, actually, black and white. I played that so much as a kid, and I never beat it. Hmm. That Those final uh, worlds were so hard. Well, I mean, we can't all be blessed, can we? Damn, I'm kidding. <laughs> All right, so I'm, I'm already planning out what things are going to be. We're going to have, I think you get training rooms in this one, so we'll yeah. have uh, have people's lairs here. They can have their food in the middle and then a training room here. If we get libraries, I don't think we do here, then uh, things will go well. Assuming we don't get utterly blasted here by uh, 
by heroes that pop on in, but I don't think we will. This uh, this narrator here, what's he called? I think he's called Mentor. Yeah. Who would believe he'd later go on to become a prominent character in Peppa Pig? <laughs> you know, now that's voice actor progression. Oh yeah, oh yeah. That's off to you there. Uh, I do believe the the voice actor from Dungeon Keeper Two was really good. Um, he was more uh, understandable, I'd say. Understand? Uh, oh man, that, that, this guy really speaks to me. <laughs> Although I don't know, maybe it's uh, is it an English speaking thing? I don't know. Maybe. Um, like he. It wasn't as deep. It was just very like snarky and uh, yeah. Hmm. I uh, I kind of wish I I I remembered it better because it's been a long time since I played DK2. Probably actually after this, I'm gonna go home and play DK2. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, this whole uh, plays the classics is a dangerous thing because yeah. I, I too might find myself going back to just play more Dungeon Keeper yeah. later on. Yeah, I mean, this is during our uh, our social hour. Yes. Um, so, yeah, there's no problem to be playing games during this time, right? Right. Mm. Still, Absolutely the week not. weekend is a different story. I can yeah. totally see myself getting back into this. <laughs> in fact, there was actually a version out called uh, Keeper FX, which uh, was a, a fan, well, still is a, a fan-driven thing, where they managed to fix a whole load of the oh. bugs in the original version. There's a lot of features that I remember playing as a kid and it would have uh, tool tips and descriptions for things that I'm like, I'm pretty sure this isn't doing what it says. <laughs> so it's it's fun to oh, see later on. It's like, well, no, actually like it that. can work that way. Where it's like, oh, well, we were planning for a feature, but we were not able to get it in. Also, we didn't have time to remove all the references to it. Yeah. Um, that was a huge thing in the, um, uh, in the Donkey Kong Country uh, scene for uh -huh. a long time, where uh, when you beat the game, 100% it. Um, there, there's a reference to like a speed challenge where you have to beat the game within like an hour. Yeah. Which is kind of hard to do. And then uh, someone asked the, some of, on the team and was like, yeah, no, that was a cut feature that we kind of forgot to remove the reference to. Yeah, I, I love hearing feedback about that after the case, and yeah. I wish more development teams did it. <laughs> um, where they would actually go, yeah, this is what we were thinking, this is what we worked on, and this we didn't have time for. Because, I mean, a lot of old, uh, these old games that I want to hear the stories about, I mean, yeah. they're, they're getting old. It's getting hard to track down people for. So oh, the, yeah, absolutely. But I'm glad sites like the Cutting Room Floor are around for where you can actually unearth the, mm -hmm. the content. So this is something I love to do in the game. I'm just going to do it now. Ah! Put, oh, in, yeah. put in that central piece to uh, to get all the, all the so animated brutal, objects this here. Game. Oh, yeah. Oh, hell yeah. But, I mean, that's exactly, exactly what one's looking for here. So, yeah. the game's probably telling me to do stuff, but I'm pretty confident everything's going to work out fine. We've got a nice big treasure room. It's probably bigger than it needs to be. So, I, I just looked up Donkey Keeper 2 on Wikipedia, and I remember something. Uh, an anecdote from my yeah. past, where if you look on the box art for Donkey Keeper 2, oh, there's, yeah. uh, there's a lady there. Yeah, who uh, may um, not look very uh, child friendly. She was the, one of the mistresses. Yeah, right? I think they, I'm, I'm trying they're to. They're so OP. They're really good. They learn yeah. lightning and life drain and oh yeah, just really really good. And then um, let's see if I can find her name. She was Dark Mistress. That's the one. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't allowed to play DK2 after my mom saw saw these Aww. characters. <laughs> no, I remember my parents seeing this game and being so, like, good boy, good boy. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so thank you, mom, if you're watching. No. I owe it all to you. Yeah. So, oh, yeah, there was a, a, a spiritual successor that was kickstarted. Um, I played very little of it. Uh, to what, the Dungeon Keeper series? Yeah, to the Dungeon Keeper series. What was it called? War for the Overworld. Oh, yes, yes! Uh, I, I played very little of it. Uh, I know they did some massive updates for it, so... I have not actually pursued that one yet. I actually kickstarted it. Ooh. So, uh, yeah. I should probably... should probably play that since I paid for it. Yeah, ain't, ain't, that, that, ain't that the curse? It's like so many yeah. games that, uh, that you have. From yeah. where comes the time. <laughs> okay, I'm not sure if there's anything we have to do until we just get invaded here. It's just saying, allow imps to fortify the walls. It increases the efficiency of the rooms. Now, this is um, something interesting about the game where a lot of the information is very vague and it's hard to get uh, a lot of actual insight into what things do. But that was very often the case in mm -hmm. these games in uh, the 90s and even earlier. Yeah. Sometimes even later. So, I mean, 
Increased efficiency of rooms. It's like, what, yeah. <laughs> what, what does that do? Do they train better? Is it cheaper? Can I house more people here? I have no idea, no. game. Please tell me. Manual shouldn't tell you. It's just like more efficient. Uh, <laughs> there's a lot of information there that I really want to dig up. But uh, in uh, in mid to late nineties in Scotland, yeah, yeah, yeah. The internet was still like we were still sussing out how to make like wheels and fire. <laughs> the very idea of uh, this mass network of communication was still very very alien to us. Yeah, I think nine ninety seven. We were probably still on fifty six k. Um, yeah, had, had Sweden become a first world country by then? I mean, I'm, I'm <laughs> struggling to struggling to imagine it, really. Uh, we, um, I think we got broadband in 2000. Ooh. Ooh, wow. Which, if only I could have had broadband in 2000. <laughs> oh, that would be amazing. But hey, we we are what? I mean, it wasn't fast broadband. But it no, was broadband. no, but it was it was no 56k modem. No, it was, it was like 256k yeah. broadband. Mm. <laughs> Went through the television tubes. Yeah. Do anything uh, coming in from? Uh, um, from just a, a lot of uh, discussion about uh, Dungeon Keeper. Well, I mean, there's a, a lot to say about it. this. This game did a whole lot that was new, and that's what really delayed this game a lot. Like they wanted to do something yeah. different and visionary. And by gods, they did a great job of it. <laughs> uh, so hats off to them. Um, people are suggesting that uh, you should add, uh, now that you're game director for uh, EU4, congratulations wait, 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 on that, okay. by the way. Okay, sure. Um, they, that you should add the uh, uh, underworld to EU4. Okay, so let's try and puzzle out how that would work in uh, Europa Universalis. So I, I just uh, I jump into a meeting tomorrow and yeah. I go like, we've been doing it all wrong. This game needs a threat from the underworld. Yeah. I mean, would you be the underworld? Would you be the evil one, or would you well, fight against it? Well, it's EU, so you would have a choice to play as either. Oh, yeah, of course. So got to got to keep it open ended there. Yeah. So, hmm. Oh, this is nice. We'll have them actually drop in on the training room so that. Uh... Oh, ho, ho. <laughs> what a horrible place to break into! Just when everyone's <laughs> getting all swole, and it's just like, oh right, this uh, this punching bag actually moves and creaks. Uh, <laughs> okay, so you're you're playing uh, Europa Universalis. Uh, your economy is going fine. You've just annexed your neighbors, and uh, all of a sudden an event pops, and then out from the ground spawns two uh, two devil spawns. A horned reaper and a dark mistress. Yeah, that sounds and, fair. And uh, you, you have to immediately you, you have to make your decision. Are you going to ally uh, ally with them and help them spread the chaos, Oof. or uh, or are you going to fight against them? Plus ten imperial authority if you do. I, I see. Uh, yeah, I see uh, the EU scenario game coming in. Here. Mm -hmm. I wonder if uh, I wonder if bullfrog or I suppose it would be EA, EA now would be on our case yeah, about yeah. that. Um, it's like uh, hold on, we're trying to branch. I mean, it's always uh, EA. They've got to branch off uh, Dungeon Keeper into all the new uh, all yeah. the new standards. They want to really push the mobile stuff, so we can't do that. Uh, maybe we should just walk across the street and be like, "Hey, I, I know you're just not. Go, come I know on. you're not actually EA, but dice, you're owned by EA. Yeah, close come enough. On. Come on, give please, me. Please, sir, may I have a license? <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh. Now, um, Pope versus Satan. either I said it or I didn't, either way, I'm going to pretend I said it. Like I was saying, this game features heavily indirect control, so you are not being the creatures. The option is there. Yeah. I mean, I, I could become this fly and start flying around, which, by the way, was the absolute dog's bollocks in the time. Whoa, I mean, whoa, just going whoa, around. That is... This. Whoa. That okay. is way better than the beetle. Yeah. I mean, you can be uh, directly your creatures, but the whole yeah. theme here is indirect Much control. control. Much like a city builder or a mm -hmm. theme hospital. Now that... Oh, theme hospital and theme uh, theme park just... Oh, oh. Rollercoaster tycoon. Steady now, though. I can only get so excited. <laughs> um, yeah, indirect control is the name of the game here. Uh, that is certainly a huge strength and a greatly innovative thing for the game. Yeah. However, it comes with its own weaknesses in a way, in that uh, strategically, when it comes to fights, you just kind of drop and wait. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can drop like uh, your casters in the back and your meat shields up front, but in the end, it all devolves into a bit of a brawl. To be fair, that's kind of what I like in games. I when I play when I play StarCraft, 
I build a bunch of units and then I send them in and just watch the carnage. Mm. That's how I play StarCraft. <laughs> it's not strategic. I not a strategy would just gamer. love this game to have that bit more strategic yeah, depth sure. because that, in my eyes, is where it's kind of uh, kind of lacking. Because when it comes down to it, you just got to train up the biggest, beefiest guys you can, and there is a slight level to. Um, to how you can sort it out, as I said, but in the end, the game can't even handle big, uh, big conflicts. Like no. it, it can only handle so many creatures actually engaging at one time. The rest just kind of jump around. We might be able to see that here, although I'm not sure if eight is going to be enough. Let's just throw them all down. The game even encourages you to do this. Oh, just yeah. drop everyone down. And as you can see, we got these guys at the back. You can even zoom in. Oh well, maybe on the vod you could see that. I just eliminated the Lord of Land. It wasn't even there. But they're just kind of like derping around. They yeah, don't know yeah. what to do. It's Absolutely. Just, uh, it's too much to ask of a game from, from this time, from but uh, if this was to be revisited, I want a, a bit more strategic depth and, and, and involvement to it. Cool. But, I mean, can't really let that take it away from no. what an incredible experience this is. And again, it's it gets to be told fantastic. how much we've raised the area. Dark Anna. Oh, yes. The surviving citizens have more no, it's the same uh, narrator. Yeah, same guy. I, I think he did all the voiceovers that aren't uh, uh, aren't of minions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For all we know, he, he might have even done those. Okay, so he, scoring a bit better. I think they, they, they had a stretch goal for War for the Old World to bring him back for for that game. Hmm. I, I would like to play uh, War for the Overworld mostly to see how they improved on the, uh, the UX, yeah. the user experience here, because it really shows its date when you're actually trying to make your dungeons here. You've got to place every tile individually, and you're going to be placing yeah. hundreds of them. I they solved it in two. They, they had drag and drop in two. Yeah, in two. Yeah. So uh, instead of uh, doing every tile individually, you would just drag out a uh, an area like you would in Excel or something mm. like that. Where you would... Yeah. Damn. It. Damn right. Oh, and the gold. And that, the that said, there is a certain something to the way that you do like individually do this. I, I like this. It feels good. It sounds yeah. good. You, you can see what you're going to be making yeah. here. It all works, but it could work better. <laughs> but I mean, they, they knew that. No. Oh, uh, Red Aramer uh, points Hello, out Red. that uh, the, the the people or the the creatures that are standing in the back they're cheering their uh, their teammates or their friends on. It's mm. very cute. Perhaps, but we're not here for cute. If you want to, and this, okay, here's something I really like in the game. If you want to play cute, you can actually torture the fairy girls until they do your bidding. Yeah, and that good. that is just like. <laughs> That's what I play games for, you know. <laughs> Just torture people until they do your bidding. Is that uh, too much to ask? Yeah, that's why I'm not working on EU4. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Also because I'm not a game developer, but that's besides the point. No, no, you'd be tortured into becoming one. <laughs> I mean, th this is totally like uh, Paradox After Dark streams. We can talk about yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff, right? Excellent. Of course, I mean, we, we stream... Uh, CK2 on this channel, so, uh... Amen. It's, uh... I mean, we've done worse. Just the, the spawning of imps was fantastic. I mean, how... This game would be so different and, frankly, duller for it if you had to actually do all this stuff yourself. But actually yeah, yeah. having... Uh, having these guys that do it all for you, now that's where the fun's at. It's really good. So, again, might as well have a lair, a hatchery, a, it, a training room. It's a, a good level of automation, because if you automate everything, then you're not doing anything, and that's boring. Absolutely. But this kind of automation is really fun, because you, you're still doing things, and then, like, you're seeing your orders being uh, unfold. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Yeah, if anything, there probably could have been more things for you to give your uh, your minions to do. But again, I'm, I'm just starting to nitpick on here. I can't say enough that this no. game is already fantastic. But generally, each each minion has a role, or at least a few things that they're really good at. I mean, yeah. some, uh, some you'll find go into the workshops when we eventually unlock those, and they will build doors and traps for you, and they excel at that. Uh, and then you have those that are very studious, just a great mix of them. And I like that they go off and do what they want to. And then, of course, you get the Horned Reaper who's never happy with <laughs> anything. And if he goes off and does what he wants to, he just goes and beheads your imps constantly. Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's what a guy. Fantastic. <laughs> Lore-wise, I don't like what they did with the, the Horned Reaper. 
uh, he actually hates being called horny, and yet yeah, uh, yeah. later Every, on, everyone calls him he's horny. horny. Short for the Horned Reaper, and then yeah, oh, oh, oh yeah, oh. damn it! Why'd you have to make me remember oh, that? No. <laughs> that was you. Yeah, uh, no, I'm I'm blaming you. Oh, uh, uh, well, that was uh, like 15 years after uh, C uh, DK2, so. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny because uh, much as I love Dungeon Keeper, I would never actually imagine calling it DK. DK in my head is still Donkey Kong. Yeah, yeah, of course. And, and you were talking about Donkey Kong, right? Donkey Kong. Hell yeah. He's the leader of the bunch. Of Careful, I know that entire rap, and uh, <laughs> you can't pay me enough to be doing that on camera. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, <laughs> just, just, tr just, trying to, just trying to budget that one in my head. Maybe. <laughs> Still, Look, don't you we'll, we'll see. We'll see what the budget, uh, what the uh, bonus is. <laughs> yeah, sure. I just need to bake it into the contract. That's the way you you really get people. Yeah, yeah of course. All right. So now the game starts really unlocking itself with uh, with what you can build. So we can build libraries, which means you can actually strategize on what type of creatures that you want. Yeah, so, that was I choice. love having warlocks. They're actually pretty garbage. Their spells are not that great. They have an annoying uh, spell called Wind that just kind of blows everyone into a corner <laughs> and then that just throws all strategy out the window. Yeah. Uh, they're pretty fragile. But, you know, just thematically, I love it. Really you know, cool, you, we, we are the Lord of Darkness here. Yeah, and you have to have we warlocks. should have warlocks. He also screams so well when you drop him. <laughs> also, he's uh, he's actually really angry that there are imps uh, inside his library. And if he was level two and you had to launch fireballs, he would actually be launching them at these guys right now. <laughs> so uh, that's what we're actually going to do. Oh, as soon that's as amazing. He... Actually, no, we're going to do that now. My warlocks should know exactly how to launch <laughs> fireballs. Now he wouldn't willingly go and train himself here. I had to, uh, I had to drop him in here. Yeah. However, the uh, the little demon spawns—I forget what they're called. Let's go and investigate here. What are you? The tooltips here take like forever and a day to pop up, or maybe it's not going to tell me. Huh. Ah. Well. Let's... Ah, there we go. You get some, uh, some tooltips. Yeah. Let's see. The creature's ability um, to perform. Yeah, thank you. Bile, bile demon? Sounds no, no heavens, no bile demons are the big fat red guys. Demon spawn? Demon spawn sounds like it. <laughs> that scream. Yeah. So uh, something interesting I read about this game was that uh, wasn't uh, wasn't the intention to have such an invasive UI here. It is okay. pretty invasive. Yeah. Uh, but apparently they didn't like reminding people that this is a video game that you're playing. They wanted it okay. to be... The, the plan, again, from what I've heard, uh, take that with a pinch of salt that you need to, was that they, they wanted to not really have uh, baked-in buttons and icons and stuff here, but I guess that's a challenge. Like, yeah, that is of course, a of huge course. huge UI challenge. Uh, so in the end, they had to sell this. I don't think it's too bad. You, you can yeah. also hide it. Uh, it's not the worst UI we've had. Try. There, we oh, go. there we go. Yeah, That's you fine. can. You can. Play I mean, it. I still, I'm still aware that I'm Ooh. playing a video game. Well, watching you play a video game. There we go. Um, let's let's but, get that yeah. research done. Also, there, there are all these mysteries in the map. Yeah. And it, a bit of a problem with the game is that you already know what's there once you've played a map. There is no kind of procedural no. content the, in the game. Way before procedural uh, generation. Uh, yeah. But that doesn't mean you can't be ambitious. No, no. no. Still. All right, There's there. nothing left to research. Yeah, they've done the research, so now they can research getting swole. Eventually, um, I want my wizards to cast fist. Swearbound says, you can see their name when hovering over their icon in Creature Selection Tool. You can see their name? Oh, yeah. Oh, right. You mean the the name of the yeah, creature? Yeah, Here we go. Spawn, so yeah, yeah, we've got demon spawn, the warlocks, warlocks, the flies, and the beetles. Yeah. Beetles are pretty cool because they are so rubbish. But at uh, at a late game, they yeah. learn a spell freeze, which is oh. so overpowered. Wow. Just freezes an enemy in place completely, <laughs> and uh, they can even be killed in one hit if you know world of power, uh, another spell, if I'm remembering well. Yeah. Who would have thought? Man, this is dangerous. Uh, the, I think you're writing off my weekend by having me play this. <laughs> Still, we're going to investigate one of these secrets, because, I mean, this right here just yeah, begs to, to, to be, be investigated. And then we get 
pro quite possibly my favorite creatures here, the skeletons. Oh yeah. There's... Now, they're pretty weak. <laughs> they're really quite <laughs> fragile. Sound. Yeah, but they sound awesome and they <sighs> love to train. You know, get some swole skeletons. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, okay, there's something... Work, work, on, work on them, uh, I'm confident. Vice. I'm confident we're gonna win anyway, so I'm gonna try dropping them down here. Now, how would a skeleton eat? Oh, uh, oh he, what a cheater! Right, you can force feed him though. He just picks up the the uh, chickeny thing and just puts it into his <laughs> rib cage. It's like, what what's happening? I remember That's my, an amazing one. My brother detail. at the time was like, no, no, no. He he needs to. He needs his bone marrow. So of course he needs to eat. And I was still like, what? Okay. Yeah, I love those skeletons. Surely also, he'd be drinking milk, if uh, if anything. There is no milk in my underworld. Bathing ba bathing in milk, chicken milk. Yeah, that would be kind of cool. It's like that uh, little comic where the skeleton just drinks enough milk and then he can take oh, yeah. uh, all the all the traps and all the arrows and all the damage. No hit point damage. <laughs> ah. I wonder if Have you used can... Alt-R already? Is... alt R. Someone uh, asked. Alt-R. Ooh, what does that... What does this button do? That crashes the game. Thank you. Oh, 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 right. No, we want to... Uh, that changes resolution. Oh. Of course. Okay. Because, I mean, you, you couldn't work that into the UI. However, the game kind of runs like ass on this resolution. Actually, I'm wondering why. I mean, yeah, that's, computers that's so weird. I guess it's like house, a DOS so. box thing. Okay, I, I don't want to play on super slow mode. <laughs> We're just going to ruin your stream for you here. Yeah, there. Uh, this is... Let's let's settle for Swedish Schlagom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or I'm just going to mess with resolution till the uh, end of days. There we go. Um, well, we... now everything runs on us. Yeah, okay. I guess it only comes in two resolutions then. Yeah. <laughs> All right, this is the last time I press it, I promise. There it, we go. It's not okay. like we haven't had worse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, just what are you implying, Anders? <laughs> I I'm implying that resolution doesn't necessarily make the game better. Ooh. Oh. I mean, so I've, I've, like seen, I've seen Johan play Pirates. <laughs> Pirates is an awesome game, though. It, it doesn't is. need to look good. Yeah, it just is good. But that I get. That's one of the things you learn by uh, doing a lot of uh, place the classic streams or buying the games is that a lot of games you remember as being awesome are still awesome, but they look slightly worse. Yes, I uh, I agree. I awesome totally agree. and except for Quake Two, terrible. Quake Two still looks amazing. And <laughs> I'll, I won't fight anyone who disagrees with me, but I'll look at them angrily. Okay. Sure, you can look at me angrily, because I don't think uh, it looks amazing still. <laughs> oh, a lot of old games look bad. happens yeah, when you come down here after hours. All right, now we get to have fun with the wizards. I think they know how to heal themselves, and they know how to launch fireballs, so... Yeah. Oh, that sound. That, that health bar is really cool as well, where it's like a circle around the, oh, yeah. around the level. Also, it's payday. This is something I really like. They demand a salary. Yeah. So they go and take it from the gold room. And if you run out of money, well, uh, you're in trouble, my friend. Oh. Yep. Kaboom. Now, this would work out better if I had somebody actually somewhat screening for the, uh, for the warlocks. <laughs> but I just like the warlocks so much. Yeah, I just yeah. wanted to be... That's fine. It's so, like level three or whatever. So imagine me, I, I was playing this uh, as as a child, as I did, and well into my uh, teenage years, actually, when I finally got a computer that had sound. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but I digress. Um, man, what was I even saying? Okay, and then you discover majesty. <laughs> okay, it's not quite the grim underworld thing, but it had that same idea of build up a world but have indirect control. Yeah. Uh... So the question for me is, have you have you played Majesty? Um, we actually we published that. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, I have not. Go, my skeletons. Uh, <laughs> see. Oh, I, I need to get some yeah. hands on here. Uh, no, I I have not. Actually, the first Majesty wasn't published by Paradox. But I mean, that that whole uh, bit of indirect control really speaks to oh, me wait, in a mind. game like this. So to to be able to play something else, even if it wasn't as steeped in, um, I mean, th this game is steeped in soul. Yeah, it is dripping with it. Yeah, we uh, we published the uh, Majesty Two. Yes, 
made by 1C Eno Co. Majesty, uh, Majesty 1 was a great game, Majesty 2 was a contentious game, but I still like it. <laughs> oh, the writing here as well. The first wave of attackers lie hacked to pieces on the floor and give your domain that lived-in feeling. <laughs> but it surely won't be long before their kin launch another assault. And this game knew what it was doing. They yeah. weren't shy about what they, what they knew what they wanted to paint here. And by gods, they did it. This would not have been the same if it... Uh, if it had just been, you have repelled the invaders, prepare for more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's just the level of immersion that you're looking for. It, it's, it's the flavor as well as, mm -hmm. the, the, as the gameplay. Like it, that, that does so much for the game. Somebody, uh, oh, it's Red there saying the major... Is it them? No, it's uh, Madman saying uh, Majesty 2's major flaw was the AI. Well, no, I would say the major flaw is they didn't have rogues that go, Where's the goal? <laughs> <laughs> so we, it's just a countdown of time until the Lord yeah. of the Land comes along and we're going to behead him as we often That's do. That's fine. Oh, those piles of gold. So in... Did you ever play demo games and yes. you wanted it to keep going but it didn't? Yes. You know, the content is done now, there's nothing more that you can get. And you just have that feeling of, I gotta squeeze every last thing out. I remember I would mine everything out in the map, oh. just thinking maybe there's another secret that I haven't found here. <laughs> um, but one thing is the main game had gems, and the uh, the demo did not. So you actually had a limited amount of money, Yeah. and since people need paid, you would actually run into a point where you can't play anymore because you can't have people, yeah. you can't pay them. There wasn't workshops to generate money, <laughs> so it was like, I... Uh, so when you finally play the real game, and then you discover gems, which I think will be coming across soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know how we are for time. Uh, try... Well, no, yeah. we can go for a few more minutes. Try Control F12. Your minions are winning a battle. This is your idea. Yeah, well, it's chat's idea. Okay, uh, didn't do anything. Uh, no. They, the chat claims that it would uh, make the game run faster. Um, oh, well. Hey, maybe it is. Look at this thing go out. Maybe. I I think that's the same. I wonder if we can... <laughs> um, not quite a thousand points. Okay, it's still tutorial level, so I don't think we'll get, uh, oh, we'll get gems here. I just really wanted gems. Uh, but yeah, Holly Bali said that uh, it may help with running the game faster when they were in high rest okay. mode. But I like uh, the low rest. It feels like it's running, uh, running faster. Oh yeah, that's definitely faster. Yes! We got gems! Okay. Doesn't matter whatever what else we get done here. We have gems, so uh, yeah. I remember when I'd bought this game, and this was after having played the demo for for oodles and doodles. Yeah. And then I got to this level, and I'm like, "What are these? <laughs> what is this?" And then I'm like, "Gems, infinite wealth." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so good. So damn good. This. Uh, oh. Let and uh, so I, I would think I made this whole map a, uh, a treasure room and just mined these gems forever. Yeah. I, I never got tired of that. I was just I was on cloud nine <laughs> and it was pretty fabulous. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So sadly, we're actually going to be rolling to an end pretty soon. We'll, yeah. we'll never get through all this mission, but uh, no. it, they, they, the missions follow one of two... Uh, two things really. Either is you survive an onslaught, yep. or you seek out and destroy the enemy, or the enemy heart, or mm -hmm. the enemy something. So seek and destroy or survive. And both ways it involves building up your uh, building up your lair here, and you can turtle or you can rush. Yeah. The options are there. Um, it's pretty basic stuff, but that's all it needed. I mean, it's and from it 97. Was... Every game yeah, you, all, you always have to go. It's like, this is, well, this actually, is, uh, 97 was stuff. the same year that Final Fantasy VII came out, so... Yeah, so the bar wasn't high, right? <laughs> exactly. Ooh, ooh, ooh. that game. No, love that game. Mm. Mm. I wish there was a good PC version. So, y you are you saying that if it was Blondie plays the classics, then... Well, we've already gone over this. It, I, black and white, I think, is black what, and, okay. what I would choose. Black and white, sadly, never ran on my computer. Oh. And I have not yet gotten around to so giving it proper... I, I'm, I don't even need to look at chat to know that they're going to be like, Black and white sucked ass. I don't know, are they? Uh, probably. Here's okay. the thing. It wasn't very good, but for the time, 
and for my age, which was like 11, it was amazing. You you had a pet, and it like it learned and stuff. It you was... could throw people into the sea. Yeah, it was amazing. You could. The, the most efficient way of making people believe in you was throwing fireballs at them. <laughs> it's fantastic. I just, uh, just like real life. Um, let's see what people are actually saying. Uh, I don't think they're Black saying Black and White 2 guys. was pretty good. Black and White was decent. Black and White 2 didn't suck, but it was disappointing. Uh, Black and White 2 was very good. Never actually played the sequel. It's like, I don't know what happened there. It was like, hey, love this game. Can not skip the sequel? Mm. Don't even, I don't even know anything about it. I know they released like a, a standalone expansion for the original that wasn't very good. Uh, hot damn. Maybe it would be a bit hyperbole to say that if this game did not exist, I would never have been a PC gamer. Because as I said, I grew up as a Nintendo child, yeah. so it was uh, Mario, Zelda, lots of Tetris. Mm -hmm. um, lots of super obscure games on the NES and SNES Rescue Embassy Mission. Yeah. <laughs> um, so to me, the PC really wasn't much of a platform until the likes of Dungeon Keeper came along. Yeah. And I said it, it would be hyperbole just to say it was this game, because those are the likes of Caesar 3, which in my mind is still the greatest city builder known to man. Although Emperor is there and he's kind of like knocking on my gates going, come on, I'm a pretty great city builder as well. <laughs> um, oh, see, for and me then, that then was MMOs. Then there's Stronghold, you know, so many great games that I played around that time that yeah. really opened my eyes to think, Hang on, maybe I should get a PC that can yeah. actually run some video games so, for a change. But, but what about um, uh, Patrician 4? And uh, that's all we have time for today. Thank you for uh, watching, everyone. Uh, Dungeon <laughs> Keeper. I need to excuse myself. <laughs> there's business to attend to. Anyway, uh, this has been this week's Pyrox Plays the Classics. Do we have a Classics deal this week? Uh... I don't think so. We do well, you can still well, go I, to Pyro. Know, we do have one thing, and that's the latest expansion for EU4 that Jake has been working on. Yeah, yeah, yeah dungeons and yeah, yeah, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, just um, just I, yesterday went to Cradle of Civilization. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I liked someone who was suggesting that you'd uh, pitch Inferno Universalis. I'm stealing that name. <laughs> we'll see what we can do. The thing yeah. is, now, now I need to go and speak to EA. Yeah. But yes, we are sadly out of time. Yes. So, go and check out paradoxplaza.com slash on dash sale and you'll find the games that are on sale. I still believe that uh, you can get a good deal on EU4 and CK2. Uh, or, if you already have them, go and get Cradle of Civilization. I've been playing around with it today. It's pretty good. I highly encourage everybody buy roughly 10 copies of yeah. Cradle of Civilization. Fantastic. All right, goodbye. So long. <laughs>